Design dorks? What on earth is that and why is it so long? Well, my fine subjects, this right here is something me and my buddy Pyrrhic Kong of Designing For are starting up. It's a simple side series, just me and Pyrrhic talking about design stuff. A bit of debate, some light brainstorming, a few tangents, that sort of thing. It's pretty much a podcast. An easy to make fun discussion with some basic gameplay thrown in the background. So if that's your cup of tea, just sit back, relax, and let's talk game design. Do, do you want to introduce us because you're you're the bigger name, so I feel that's <laughs> only fair. Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's weird. That's the first time I've had someone tell. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> right. yeah, I'm the I am the Duke of Dorks. I make videos about various game concepts, what I'd like to see in the future of Smash Brothers characters or the future of the Pikmin series, things like that. And I also edit Know Your Moves, which is a lot of fun. Awesome. Uh, my name is Pyrrhic Kong. I am a uh, freelance voiceover artist, and I am one of the uh, head writers as well as the uh, voiceover for every episode of Designing 4, where we look at a uh, level, a character, or a concept in a game and analyze what exactly it is designing for. You know, because every game designs for different things. There's no particularly good game design. It's just what the intentions of the developers are and how well they meet those. I also really like Donkey Kong. He's, he's really cool. He's got a good singing voice. In any case, um, we figured that it would be a good idea to just uh, come together and do a little sort of powwow, a little discussion, a little debate on uh, various topics, starting with some Smash characters and maybe branching off in the future if this doesn't become a horribly conceived one-off. I'm sure it'll be fine. Ah, uh, what's the worst that could happen here? Alrighty, and we had a debate of about three minutes to, d to discover uh, which character that we would uh, gel with the most, and we settled on... Joker. This is the part where I edited in Xander Mobus' voice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem, no problem. I heard the pause, and I was like, okay... No, no, you were ready. I'm, I'm all for it. I'm, screw it. I'm leaving it in, and I'll just put Xander Mobus in anyway. Just like here. Joker. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. He's already yeah, off to a strong it. start. Yeah, we got this. All righty. So Joker was the first DLC character introduced into Smash Ultimate, and with that comes a lot of things based on his design. Like, you know, is it worth? Paying $6 for this character. What does it mean to be DLC? What standard will he set? Why is it this weird anime boy and not my beloved bandana waddle D? Best girl, obviously. <laughs> but but I figured that we would uh, settle in and say that, um, yes, we have played Persona 5. Uh, twice so far for me. Oh, really? I'm on my uh, third. So. Oh, very nice, very nice. So anyway, uh, we understand the character well. I have, uh, I actually have uh, a history with the previous two Persona games and the Arena games. And Whereas the I'm dancing just stuck games. with Persona 5. It's my only introduction to the series. Which is absolutely fair, absolutely fine. Uh, hopefully that gets poured to the Switch in some reality. Someday. But, oh well, at, le at least, did you see the new uh, Musou game? Did you see the new uh, trailer for that? Oh yeah, I was I wasn't sold on the idea at first, but it seems a lot more Persona than Muso, and it seems to be like a direct sequel to Persona Five, which actually has me pretty excited. That surprised the heck out of me. Just like they're in the van, like like you know what happened in the game. Yeah, but it's okay. a it's a sequel to Five, but not Royale. So we've got like a like a Zelda timeline branch going on right now. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, well, anyway, that has nothing to do with his representation in Smash, so um, I thought I would just uh, start off and ask you uh, your thoughts on his uh, implementation in both uh, design and moveset. Okay, so for Joker feels like one of those characters similar to Ness and Lucas that's meant to represent his game as a whole over, mm. say, the character himself, which I think he does mm. pretty well, but I... It's not the kind of representation I like in Smash Bros. Like, for some characters, that works. Like, Duck Hunt, for example, there's not much you can do with that character, so he works more as an all-encompassing, like, NES representative. 
Right, But for right. a character like Joker, who has set abilities, a set personality, it feels like a few aspects were missed when he made the jump over from Persona to Smash Brothers. Hmm. Uh, any in specific that you feel are greatly missing in that sense? I feel like there's two sides to Joker's personality to really just oversimplify things. There's the... There's the gentleman thief arsene kind of persona, if you will. But right. then there's this more this more car- cocky, aggressive side, which doesn't really make the jump into Smash Brothers. Like you see, um like even simple things like his idol animation from Persona 5 were completely changed up to match this more standing tall, prim and proper gentleman thief kind of mindset. Like in Persona 5, he holds his knife aggressively, like not with this weird reverse grip that they put into Smash Brothers for some reason. He's got like right, these really right. awesome like idols where he just kind of slowly kind of just says the come over here, bring it on kind of gesture. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't see that in Smash Brothers. Hmm. Well, would you say that it's I mean, just uh going th- for the concept of Smash Brothers, would you say that while he is fighting, this is the character of Joker that he's putting on, rather than what you see in Persona 5, which is the uh Ren Amiya Mamma Mia, or whatever his last name is, side, where, you know, he is this punk kid who goes up to Ryuji and sa- he goes, wow, you have a cool outfit, and then you go, you jelly? He goes, no. <laughs> For real? A, a, a bit, a bit. Uh, when, when we made the Know Your Moves episode on that, Alex came to the conclusion that he acts kind of like an advertisement for Persona 5, taking heavy inspirations from, like, the intro of the game. Mm-hmm. And how stylized that is, which I, th- which I agree with. I think that's a good interpretation of it. No, I, I absolutely agree. Um, actually, the uh, director of the Persona 5 intro was um, the director and uh, concept creator for the uh, ice skating anime Yuri on Ice. Really? So, yeah, so a lot of it, all, a lot of that movement is inspired by uh, figure skating. I did not know that. I've, I've learned a thing today. Awesome. Look at that. It's my quota for the month. Excellent. Uh, and anyway, um, I personally do really like the little flourishes that they add to Joker. I feel that it exhibits a very cocky character very well, like, like his up tilt, where he doesn't stab you with it. He flicks the knife in a circle, and he's like, mm, and then he pulls it back down with a flourish. Or when he does Aha and it's a little snap, it's very, not necessarily better than you, but it feel it gives that vibe of a teenager trying to show off. Like, oh look, I can spin the water bottle and make it land straight up and go, oh! And translating that feeling into kind of this um, fully fleshed out character. Now, do I think that it encapsulates every aspect of Persona. Not really, but it's kind of hard to get that whole look at the three options in this dating sim and figure out which one works best, but also roleplay so my character looks cocky kind of thing. That is that is true. That is true. I, I, I don't want to come off that I think Joker's design is bad, because it definitely isn't. Right. All the DLC characters in one way or another have had some truly phenomenal implementations. I just feel like I, I I look at him and I just feel like there's something missing. There's a there's yeah, I, aspects of him that just aren't there. I can uh, I can agree with that. Um, I do feel that I have lost my train of thought here, but um, I do feel that there are yes aspects to Joker missing. I feel that all we get necessarily from him is that sense of style. Um, when he was first revealed, when his rather when his gameplay was first revealed, uh, what I was really excited about was the idea of Rebels Guard, the fact that it is um, this move where essentially he is taking the theme of Persona Five literally and weaponizing it, the theme of oppression from the shitty adults beating you up and then going, no, it is I who has the power. And I thought that was such a cool way to thematically tie into Persona 5 without, you know, explicitly stating this is a game about rebellion, want emancipation, blah, blah, blah. 
and then it happens in the game and he just stands there and takes it and it's like this is kind of the opposite of the representation I was looking for I'm a bit biased because I had like this whole headcanon of how I wanted it to wanted it to happen like I had this whole idea of just like him absorbing the attacks of others and then summoning like these persona shades of that character to use that attack right I remember back. that mm -hmm. which I don't know if I would call that better or not but what we got right here, it's... Uh, how do I put this? It's not... He's, he's, like, taking the attacks willingly, and it's just odd. No, it, it, it feels very odd, and then I feel like uh, Tetrakarn and Makarakarn uh, having such a long reflector feels less of a gotcha sort of thing or less of a revenge sort of thing. Revenge, exactly. It feels like he should have Incineroar's mechanics if that's what they were going for with the whole reversing oppression. Now, obviously, they couldn't do that because Incineroar's in the base game and they just added him, but... And that, now that you've pointed that out, it's driving me mad. Why doesn't he have revenge? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be Boy, so that, much... And it'd be so much I, much less annoying than Tetrakarn and Makarakarn. I, I literally just said the word revenge and I went, Wait a minute... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I remember that um, a big aspect of what you had issues with with DLC characters was them reusing animations, and that Joker was one of the culprits with that, with uh, obvious parallels being able to be drawn to uh, Sheik in specific is off the top of my head with, uh, I know, the Falco forward smash as well. Um, yeah, he's got a he's got a couple of others. I think he has one of Marth's throws. I think he has uh, a couple of his kicks or zero suit Samus's, which I, I do want to like double down on why this annoys me. My favorite thing about Smash Brothers is seeing how well they translate a character over into Smash Brothers. So when they right. take something that's already in Smash Brothers and just repurpose it, it just feels it feels like a botched translation. And in some cases, it makes sense. Like the um like uh, Banjo's forward roll is pretty much the same thing as Donkey Kong's, but that's something that he does, so it's fine. Terry's dash attack is the same thing as Captain Falcon's, but they both use those kind of... Well, Captain Falcon doesn't, but Terry uses those moves, so it's fine. But with yeah, Joker, Captain there's things that he could do. Uh, Hero was another one that annoyed me. There's things that he could do, but they're just not there, and it just feels like... I'm not, I'm not seeing Joker when I see that. I see Sheik. Or I'm, not seeing, I'm not seeing Hero using the dash attack. I'm just seeing Link with a Hero costume on. Right, right. I I see that. Um, my the issue that I've always had with uh, Joker and specifically in regards to this argument is I feel that a lot of the moves that were repurposed or reskinned on him fit better on him than they do the originals. <laughs> <laughs> that's also that's a fair point. In a lot of ways. Like him doing the stylish little flippy kick. I feel like, yeah, yeah, that feels like something that this shit kid would do. Sheik, I, I don't get it. Uh, and it's like, um, like you said, with uh, t the Terry and Falcon uh, situation, it feels like, oh yeah, Sakurai probably stole that because he really likes King of Fighters. But, um, you know, with a lot of cases, I do agree with you. Hero feels the most egregious to me in just stolen moves in general but joker for some reason i feel like he kind of gets away with the best of all of the cast as opposed to um feeling like a ripoff of it it feels like he's kind of showing them up not intentionally not like look at these losers i'm a steal their moves because i'm a thief look at me beneath the mask whoop to do well, if you want to go that angle, it's thematic. Well, yeah, it's, it's thematic. I, I'm not saying that's intentional, but I'm saying that it... Just the motions feel like they work for him. So I suppose my question is, is it bad that I think that way? Like, should a DLC character be exempt from moves if they fit them well and they could focus on other aspects? I, I think it's fine. I just, I, I look at other characters on the cast, like Incineroar and King K. Rool are my go-to example, because they have a lot of similar moves in their movesets, but they have, they're very diversified in the way that they use them. Like, their down smash is the same thing, they both jump up into the air and do a belly flop, but 
King K. Rool, he's literally just flopping on the ground using his weight, whereas Incineroar is just launching himself at the ground like a wrestler. He's body slamming them. Uh, their right. up throws the same, that kind of thing. I just wish there was a little bit more, not much, but just a little bit more to just diversify them a little bit. And maybe that problem comes from, like, the older characters just not having any personality in those moves that they took from Joker. Like you said, they mm -hmm. do fit him a little bit more. I don't know, I, I just wish... Like, it's it's still, like, a solid design. Like, it's I'd give it, like, a 9 out of 10 design. That's fair. I, I would rate it fairly highly myself. I remember uh, picking him up, and he was very fun to play at the start uh, before everyone got good with him. I <laughs> realized, yeah, okay, I've hit my peak. Yeah, it's not. I, I can't do the I can't do the slow the super fast combo based characters. You just get yeah. don't click. They don't click with me. I can't do the drag down stuff at all. I feel like uh, okay, you're doing combos and I'm still here holding shield. I know that's a bad option, but what do I do? My brain hasn't caught up with you yet. Just panic. Hit the buttons and see what works. Hit the buttons. Uh, 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 Donkey Kong up B. Nailed it. <laughs> Works all the time, <laughs> now that it's buffed. I did want to look over his specials, uh, just real quick, as I feel that those are generally what give a character their defining bits of personality, with, with some exceptions, like uh, Ganondorf's up tilt being very emblematic of him, for better or worse. Mm -hmm. um, but... Just like, you know, Mario is very generic, punch, punch, kick, whatever, but then he gets his specials, and it's the f using his power-ups and his tools at his disposal for very specific situations. Um, and I feel that I don't know how in love with Joker's specials I am. Um, I'm glad that they included Gun in the way that... Er, bleh, let me rephrase. I'm glad that they included Gun. I don't love it in the way that they included it. Because in the game, it's it's a combo tool. You use it to down an enemy and get the baton pass 90% of the time. In this game, it's, it, it's a very individualized action. And it doesn't play into his game at all. I feel that uh, Bayonetta kind of captures what Joker's gunplay is in-game and translates that to Smash better, whereas in Smash, it's essentially a gimping tool. I, I never thought about Bayonetta, the Bayonetta comparison, but you're right. It's a, it's a much better showcase of how like the Persona kind of gunplay works. Right. I think I would have preferred like some kind of like tie it into the Smash attacks where the gunshot trips and then he does an attack afterwards. Oh, that'd be cool. I like that. Something like that? Yeah, like shoot you in the foot and then you go out my foot and then he hits you. I love that. I I'm going through my head for characters that don't have feet who that won't work on. Bowser Jr. There we go. It's okay. You shoot the rotors and he just falls over. It's fine. Yeah, there you go. He goes, oh no, and he falls out. <laughs> have a specific voice clip built in for him going, wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, give, just every character, just a, a tripping voice animation. Not animation. Voice clip. Voice God, animation, yes. Yes, please uh, vocalize your thoughts. <laughs> In fact, use your voice bubbles as platforms to recover with. Oh, gosh. Um, looking at Aha, I think that one is actually pretty fine. I, I like it very much. Um, my issue is I don't feel like linking a spell in Persona, which are specifically linked to the personas works as well as it should i feel like if you were going to go the spell casting route that either if you're going to do the original arsene gimmick uh you should have essentially an overhaul with it and if not i feel like giving him one spell and two thief tools as opposed to three thief tools in the counter just feels weird to me it, it 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 doesn't feel like there's a separation between uh joker working on his own and joker working in tandem with a persona yeah, it's a little out of place it's it's probably because the arsene gimmick is so heavily tied to his entire moveset right and they wanted that to 
appear in some way. Didn't want Tarsen to just pop up and beat the snot out of you with his wings and fists. Right. It always annoys me that there's such a big play on, hey, you're a thief, you can go to your workbench and use thief tools and make tools for yourself. And we kind of get none of that. We kind of get none of Joker preparing for the heist in Smash. We get Joker is here and he has this limited tool set, which accounts for gun and grapple hook. And I feel like, I don't know, I feel like when I play as Joker, I'm never outsmarting my opponent. I feel like I'm just going through the motions of strings until I get the big red man. I don't know how well that translates. I I guess I was looking for more of a cerebral character from Joker, a, a, a trapping character. Like, like D to D is more of a trap character than Joker, and that feels really weird to me. Like he, he could I, have some kind of like smoke bombs, or uh, I'm, I'm having a hard time th- coming up with the other thief tools he uses. But I I know uh, all I ever used was uh, smoke bombs and lock picks, but. Um, can't, can't exactly see lockpicks being much of you. Maybe you could throw them at them? I don't know. No, no, no. He goes up to someone who's shielding, and he uses the lockpick, and it breaks it. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> I think it's Arsene's fault that these other avenues aren't able to be explored, because Arsene has to be involved in everything that Joker can do because of how he's built into the movesets. So you can't overcomplicate things too much, have these different weird interactions with... Uh, shields or, like, playing traps or whatnot, because then you have to do it twice, which just well, makes things difficult. Right, but on on the other hand, I feel like, okay, but why can't he throw a smoke ball and then Arsene turns it into, like, uh, what what is the poison spell called? Shit. Uh, 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 Aegeon? I, I, no, Aeg- wait. No, no, that's, that's a darkness spell. Uh, screw it, uh, Mudun and just like oh, give it right. give it a field that might cause a thwack effect. I don't know. Oh, that's actually a really good idea right there. Like once Arsene comes onto the field, change the like say his side B when he's not um like replace the Iha with the smoke bomb and then when he gets into the Arsene turn it into a spell and do that for the other moves as well cuz it's kind of what he already does with um the down B even the Red Ribbles Guard technically isn't in Persona 5 in the first place, but... Like, do we really need Gun Special? When you have to have a, okay, is, <laughs> a name like Gun Special, it's just... That, that could easily use be... Gun. No, I... I don't know, Dream Needle or something like that? Yeah, or just like... God, what's, what's the big one? The one-shot kill or one-kill shot that, like, Seth gets? Um... Oh, I, 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 I can picture it in my head. Yeah, but, like, have that and make it, like, the staff item effect. Ooh. And then, and then, so you don't spam it, have it greatly deplete the gauge every time you use it. I I like that a lot. That's fun. Ah, why isn't he like that? (laughs) Right? It's just, there are a lot of little things with his design that irk me and it's not that it's bad it's not it's fun it's flowing it it feels like a combination of free running and figure skating and what what what's the word where you jump from building parkour. Uh, parkour yeah parkour that's the word that i'm failing to think of like it, it feels kind of like mirrors edgy the way that joker moves and joker reacts to things and I don't know it feels like that's the crux of it and it doesn't quite get into the duality that Persona has so I I suppose that gets into the the big point which is uh, the the big red man himself uh, Clifford the big red dog Arsene Um, do you think he's good design to be completely honest I'm torn because I feel like part of the reason that Joker reuses so many things is because everything had to do it twice. So right. everything had to be made twice, rather. And I feel like Sakurai's ambition is almost getting to him, where he's got these, like, grand, like, I want to give Hero 24 different spells, but not having the resources to do that 
properly, and doing that kind of limits the direction you have. To, it railroads your design for how where you can go with the character. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't like the way Arsene was implemented in regards to how that carries over from Persona, because that does that's not how it works at all. <laughs> What, it, it doesn't work? The, you're a weak little baby, and then you take it, and you decide, I've had enough, and then you get super-powered. That, that's what it is. No, not really. Like, it, the, the thematics, I can, I can see where they're going, and in a way, it really, really works. As, like, a, a base concept, but the way it actually functions in-game is just absolutely bizarre. It's not this kind of... Like, I, I I understand why they didn't do it, because you want each DLC character to be unique, but the mana gimmick that Hero has is kind of the same thing here. You start... Joker should start off really, really powerful, but wean off as he goes through the battle because you have to plan out your moves wisely in Persona. And if you use too much too quickly, then you're just... you gotta leave the palace. You're done. Yeah, no, that's, um... That's the only difficulty I find in Persona, actually, is how long can I go at this palace? Well, until my SP holds out. That That's the crux of a dungeon crawler. You go until your resources end. Um, it's exactly. so weird that we have Hero, who is that, Banjo, who is that to an extreme, and then Terry, who is the opposite of that, but is also Joker's theme, but done better? Oh, you, oh, all these comparisons are blowing my mind, man. I haven't thought about it in these ways, but you're absolutely right. Why isn't... G give Terry the mask, <laughs> and he's, he's like half there. He tears off the mask. And it... it he's just got Captain Falcon in it as his it's persona. It's Ken underneath. <laughs> 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 no, he takes off the hat. The hat is the mask. Oh, yeah. And then the hat's a projectile. Oh, he, sh he should have had a projectile taunt like oh, Snake's God, hat. I know. Or just... Like, you can't get the hat back, so I get it. But that would have been oh, hilarious. The one... At least give it a hitbox on, like, I, the stab The one mode. thing that I wanted was, uh, in previous Capcom vs. SNK games, uh, Terry and Ken had a special animation where Ken would have Terry's hat and he would toss it to him. And then they'd go, okay, and start the fight. And I just want that so bad. Ah, someday. someday. Probably not. Never actually, again. You had your shot, uh, Sakurai. And you wasted it. You made this wonderful game, yeah. but we're just not happy. You gave me everything I wanted, and then I discovered I wanted more. <laughs> You've made me fat and greedy. That's, that, that, that's the Smash Brothers curse right there. Sakurai's just too good that he, he just wanted yes. more. Okay, give me... Okay, thank you, but, like, where, where's trophies in Smash Run? Dude. How come Joker doesn't use every single one of his other Phantom Thieves in his movesets? Why don't Ken and Ryu brofist every time that they fight? I, I don't understand. But, okay, the interesting thing that I learned is I, I watched a uh, Hitbox video about Joker recently, and I learned that um, Joker's hitboxes don't change when he has Arsene. Instead, Arsene goes over his hitboxes, and those take over Jokers. So if, like, the weak hit of Jokers hits, then it'll be a Joker hit. But our sends are generally bigger, so our send is essentially doubling the amount of hitboxes Joker has. Like, the the, the spike that he does when uh, our send in down air, that's our send stomping. The stomp is the only thing that has the spike hitbox. Joker's swipe does nothing to spike. Yeah, which is so irritating on so many levels. Well, just in, like, a gameplay perspective, because spiking is, like, 60% of why I play Smash Brothers Right, in the first yeah, place. it's fun to just go off stage and bully people. But, um, that got me thinking in that the design of Arsene is very much overlapping Jokers, but I feel like it's kind of overriding him as well. And I felt like, um, not to get too weeby here... And not to get too mimetic here. We're talking about Persona. You can't go uh, too far. Give me Embrace one second, it. because I might just go far when I say the next phrase. So JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean this in the way of the JoJo fighting games have the mechanic where you stand, which is essentially a Persona. I, for all intents and purposes. 
it's it's a persona you hit the button and your stand comes out and it changes the way that your attacks interact with people it changes essentially your normal punch to be stand punch I wonder why Joker doesn't just have a toggle for Arsene going on and off, and if he uses him too much, it ends up not being in the stock. Or, he can't use it for the rest of the stock. Other games with the exact same concept have proven that this is viable and this works for characters. Now, those games do have more characters with this concept, but it also has characters that do not participate with the stand fighting style. Not very many, but there's a couple, and some of them are sometimes viable. So, I don't know. I don't know why there's no punishment for Joker overextending with Arsene, basically. I, I have... I, I can't answer that because I have no idea myself. Now, I, I do think th there's the obvious criticism that Arsene does not represent Joker as the wild card. It doesn't represent him as being incredibly flexible with his skill set and whatnot. But I get it. It's hard to animate a ton of personas. Your idea was great. I love your idea of Joker takes the attack and then he gets the shadow, the true self, to attack them with back. I mean, I, 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 st I still wish that that was how it worked. Just because I feel like that captures the essence of Persona, of just taking the moves from every enemy you see. That that is the wild card in of itself. I do too, but also Jack Frost isn't in the game at all, and that feels weird. That that feels wrong. W why? Like even that's I know not even why. Spirit. Caroline and Justine are spirits. I think. <laughs> okay, they good. Are, they are. Okay, I good. Remember that fight? Because I, I forgot. But not the mascot of like the thing you're taking uh, the game for no, no. from. Like I haven't like show up on mementos or something. I don't know. So, my general desire for Joker was to have his down B be sort of his ability to scheme and his ability to plot and his ability to think things out and either make tools, uh, select personas to uh, change some properties of attacks, that sort of thing. That's kind of what I wanted from him uh, starting out and then, I don't know, some weird ideas of what he'd do for up B because grappling hook was literally an anime exclusive thing at that point but has it ever been confirmed where that came from did sakurai like know it was in royal or was it just i, I don't know like, i thematic? really don't know i'd be curious to to like hear about that because either he got cool insider information or he just he's just that good of a designer that well, i mean he, he did him. hug morgana so i mean he's like morgana was like hey just kind of whispered into his ear, just, just grab a grab, 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 just trust me. Go to bed. <laughs> Do you know how hard you work? S Sakurai's the only person that can resist <laughs> Morgana telling him to go to bed. I have insomnia. But yeah. But I, I like that idea a lot of just Joker being able to, like, plan ahead for a city, almost in like a, not necessarily sh Shulk's gimmick, but Shulk-inspired in the ways that you can adapt for various right, situations. Right, right maybe create like consumables over yeah some that's amount of time. that's generally what i was thinking and you could make the animation where he like goes on a small table and he's talking to one of the phantom thieves randomly generated so that they're incorporated in Ooh, i like that and you could that even allows for like an easy like animation transition because there's the the when you're dodging around palaces that just quick shadowy darts you can just have the phantom thief dart on plop table in front of you and just kind of like hey what you buying and then you kind of just craft it together and pick it up and then right and get. even if that didn't work and you uh centered it on personas themselves you could use uh igor for essentially the same thing oh that'd be great i'll just have him appear in like the persona flames yeah and just be like and then do the, have, the creepy have Joker voice that no one likes, a... and makes everyone feel uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, and then Joker could be in his, like his prisoner prisoner's garb, and he has the uh the 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 ball and chain on his leg. So even if he gets knocked out of this, because it'd probably be very punishable, he wouldn't be get knocked very far. Oh, that's clever! So can... Damn, that's clever! So you can like 
mix things up in that way, not have to worry too much about being punished for it. He's scheming, using his tools to his advantage. Uh, I like that. Damn it, I like that. You're making me disappointed here. Well, you've been doing that for most of this. I gotta, like, oh, yeah, turn the favor, but, uh... man. Come on. All right, so um, the big question that I want to leave Joker with, because, you know, he is what he is, but for what we've got, we have a fun Smash character that fits the flourish of Persona 5, if not necessarily the um, content of Persona 5. But what I want to ask is... Do you think that as he is built now with Rebel's Guard as it is, with Arsene as he is, do you think, one, that it's overpowered, and two, that DLC characters should always be good because you are paying extra for them? Uh, I'll, I'll answer the second one first because I definitely don't think DLC characters should be good. I just think they should be fun. Because it, it's... It, one of the most enjoyable things, I think, in fighting games is beating people with a bad character. I agree. Like, if, if Waluigi ever gets into the game, he needs to be one of the worst characters, so it feels so amazing when you win with him. Uh, that's what Pichu used to be. Yeah, I, I, I miss that. I really do miss that. I, I miss, miss that, that too. I miss terrible rodents that you could just... Hey, I'm gonna really disrespect you this game. On the other hand, I'm so happy that he's one of the best characters in the game. Yeah, it, it does. It does feel really good just to see Joker. Just p part of it's just bias that people are getting into Persona because hey, there's this character that's really good and he's really flashy, and it's it does advertise Persona really, really well. Right. I do think it's a bit overpowered. I I agree. Once you have Arsene, you're just you're 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 essentially two characters. Joker can only already pull off some crazy things, some crazy combos on his own. But once you have Arsene, you're killing people at sixty with very little effort. Yeah. These hitboxes last so much longer, and that stupid counter hits you no matter where you are, right? I, as a King K. Rule main, I am offended by <laughs> how flexible that is and how much it actually functions. But I mean, that's that is how Tetracarn and Makarakarn function in game. It's you do the hit and it reflect, and it hit you all the time. Is that yeah, not I'd... faithful? Yeah, it fits, but it's not very fun to deal with. <laughs> and see, that's like, that's where I, I'm I agree. the one that's supposed to use that, not get hit by it. Right. See, that's that's where I agree. I feel like there needs to be a balance between how it functions in game and how it translates into a fighting game. I always feel like it should be like stylized essentially with the Arsen wing slap to slap it back at you. And in that sense, I feel like it should just be. Mario's cape, but better. I could see that. Or maybe make it so you have to, like, to fit more with the scheming kind of theme. Make it so you have to choose one or the other, Tetracarn or Makarakarn, to try and really just call out what your opponent's hitting you with. I don't know. I, I don't know how you do that. Some kind of shield special type of thing, but... Yeah, I don't know. Just having it all encompassing is so just... It's obnoxious. <laughs> Uh, the, the one thing that I struggle with with DLC is... Imagine if Little Mac were DLC. Would would he get bought at all? Because technically, he has the same gimmicks. He has a meter. He has a unique design. He has very powerful individual options. But he is so weak and underpowered compared to the current meta because that... You know, he's one game behind, essentially, in design philosophy, and it's overtaken him. If someone had a Little Mac level of design and was given to you as DLC, would that be worth making them as DLC? Would, th would that be worth paying $6 to lose his Little Mac on For Glory? That's an interesting question, because Little, Little Mac has a specific role like, he, he's the ground fighter of right. Smash Brothers, so he's only going to appeal to a very niche audience with that. And he also doesn't have the right. star power of, say, Joker or Banjo. Like, like Punch-Out's popular, but it's not that that mind-blowing, Whoa! Punch-Out's in the game now? Essentially, Lil Mac is appealing to a similar size fan base as a Terry Bogard would, so... Yeah. But without the 
extremely flashy personality of Terry. Yeah, yeah, just with, oh, he does boxing. I, I mean, if he had Doc Lewis cheering him on the entire time in the background, please add this, then that's different, but... I, I, I don't think you could... I don't think you could sell Little Mac. Right, so... Because once you, uh, once you get the, uh, the knowledge out there that, hey... If you don't like, if you don't like this very specific kind of playstyle, you're not going to enjoy this character. Right, but at, at the same time, that's kind of what Terry is in his rushdown and combo game. Or that's kind of what Joker is in his juggling and grapple game. And his extending combos and the hit with the grapple hook and do the big counter. It, there, it's a very specific flow that does not appeal to everyone. And we can see that with how upset people get when Joker wins tournaments because, you know, it's similar to the playstyle we've seen from Sheik before that had dominated tournaments in Smash 4, and people are going, oh, is this again? I'm sick of this. So, if he weren't good, would that be worth your money? I guess I'd look at the... I'm looking at Banjo right now, who isn't necessarily one of the greatest characters. Like, he's okay. I think I, I'm, I'm not really caught up on the current like smash brothers meta mm -hmm. I, i'm i'm sure he's not like top tier right now right but he's got the he's got the recognition he's he's the microsoft character what the heck he's this character nintendo hasn't seen in 20 years whoa he's back he's home well, well yes and that kind of th there's so many and factors at play with the dlc i do feel like joker by nature of being joker in smash brothers this playstation persona 5 character I think he could be bad, and people still would have bought him. That's fair. I mean, I would have bought him for the music, but... <laughs> <laughs> I would have bought the musical standalone. Right? Oh. That Beneath the Mask remix? I oh, would have paid my. $5 for that. I wouldn't have thought about it. Oh my god, maybe, I would have paid $10 five, but... for the remix of I'll Face Myself that we got. Oh, but... yes. Because you didn't have to do that. That's not even Persona 5. But, but that's my favorite. Take my money. I will commission you in the past to make this. <laughs> yeah, guar just guarantee that it's going to happen. You need to commission them regardless. <laughs> right. So anyway, uh, I think that that basically shows us attacking Joker from any every angle. Um, do you have any parting thoughts with him? Just like an overall feeling of the character, a sort of uh, after we've gone over this. Are you happy with how he is in Smash? Uh, would you want to see him reworked if he ever shows up again? Probably not, but just play the hypothetical game. All right, I, I, I do want to stress, first of all, that like this isn't like an attack on like Sakurai or the designers. Like I still think they did a bang-up job for what Joker is right now. Oh, absolutely. Like, they they clearly course. had a vision of what they wanted Joker to be, mm -hmm. and I think they achieved that vision. I just don't necessarily agree with that vision that they had yes there, there were, but there were plenty of other options and i understand why they picked this one because it's the most flashy and it gives the best surface level impression of just hey you want to play persona there's this cool character right here well they'll show you why yeah not on our console though but i i, I would want him if he does show up sometime if like when the next smash brothers comes around i i i feel like it's I personally feel like it's too much to hope for for Joker to come back, because I feel like that's going to be the reboot. You can't do Ultimate again, so you got to take another direction. But if he shows up again, I would like some sort of, like, just more all-encompassing design for the character. Yeah. And also just because I couldn't find anywhere to slot it in, I want him to use a dagger like a dagger, because he uses it like Marth's sword, and that drives me nuts. Just more more, more multi-hit moves. Yeah. With that thing. Well, I, I like his forward tilt. That's cool. Yeah, the forward tilt's good. Yeah. That's one. The up tilt's okay. Up tilt also, that's two. But, like, it's such a stylish weapon, and you're still just using it in such, like, why is his back the same as Roy's and Marth's? <laughs> that annoys me so much. <sighs> but yeah, I I do really like how Joker is implemented. I... I never have that strong of a connection with the Persona main characters because they're just a stand-in for me. Why, why would I get attached to a blank slate other than the fact that, hey, I really like me. No. 
So, um, I felt that Smash did a good job at making me like seeing Joker go through the motions and having fun with things and playing around with things. It, it made Joker feel more like a character than Persona 5 did, with, with, with some exceptions. He's, he's not the Persona 4 protagonist where he's a blank slate and then the anime fixes everything. He's, he's pretty good at showing some level of snarky cynicism through the game. But Sakurai really and his team did an excellent job at bringing in the style and the flair of Persona 5. So much praise goes to Persona 5's menus and its sense of color and its sense of theming and its sense of style. And that is what I feel or what I felt carried over the most when designing Joker. And I like that. It's fun, but I've kind of grown over it, so to speak. I, I don't have the meat that is the persona bone that keeps me coming back. That analogy didn't make sense. Let's try that again. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't. Kind of saw where you're going for, but I I know. But <laughs> it, then I called it, it kept the bone. Going. Yeah, no, the bone is it. The meat is inside the bone. You have to dig in. <laughs> but you, but you know, there's there's the outside layer of the cake, and then there's the delicious filling inside the cake. You got the frosting can sustain you for so long, but you gotta have the cake all the way cooked and at this point it feels a little molten and gloppy and underbaked and some for some people that's good less so for me there we go analogy finished makes like 70 percent of sense <laughs> we got there it was a bumpy ride but we got there eventually oh, thank god we did <laughs> oh please i did you let me careen off the road thank you though <laughs> that was that was wonderful oh thank you <laughs> i appreciate that but yeah if if we ever saw Joker again, um, you know, I'm a big proponent of not custom move sets, but at least character variations. And I'd love to see just a thief variation of Joker, a wild card variation of Joker, and then, I, I don't know, go the full Satanel route if you want for a sort of high risk, high reward kind of Joker. And play with that sort of duality and if if you're going to keep him as one character, he's going to need to find a balance between the three, and it's very weighted in the sense of the Arsene and Satanelle kind of design for Joker right now. Agreed. Um, which is good, but it's not necessarily all-encompassing. Okay. Well, with that said, I'm out of things to say. Uh, I am as well. The, the knife thing was the last bit of little tidbit of my notes excellent i think we're i think we're covered all righty well thank you all for those of you who are still sticking with us it's greatly appreciated um if you'd like any more content like this please uh let us know this is fun i i personally wouldn't mind doing it again yeah I could, to be perfectly honest i don't care how well received it is this is just fun <laughs> this is fun you know what fair point this is fun all righty so just you know Leave in the comments of things. It doesn't even have to be Smash Brothers characters. Yeah, or it can be Zelda. It can be, I don't know, Dead Space. It can be uh, Simon Says. Whatever you fo floats your fancy. Yeah, God, I love it if they added Castlevania Simon Belmont to Simon Says. <laughs> well, with that said, thank you for listening, and hopefully we will see you next time. See you then.